One of the great tzaddikim we had, says in the game of Shalom, was Chizkiyahu Melech Yehuda. So he was a great grandson of David and Melech. And uh, you know, in that time, those times, they had a lot of wicked kings. For example, the wor- one of the worst was Chizkiyahu's father, King Ahaz. He canceled the Avodah. He worshipped mm-hmm. idols. He made people go off the derech. He made idols for Baal. He gave Ketoret uh, to Avodah Zara. Our sages uh, teach, teach us that uh, King Ahaz is also banned Torah study. Why is he called Ahaz? Because he's Ahaz. He locked the synagogues. He closed the study halls. And he said to himself like this, if I stop the kids from learning, eventually there'll be no adults who know how to learn. And there'll be no divine inspiration. Ahaz and Shalom, no Shechina amongst us. So that's where Chizkiyahu grew up. And yet Chizkiyahu Amelech was a great tzaddik. As he realized uh, uh, in how he believed in Hashem and to do Teshuvah. And when King Ahaz died, King Cheskiyahu, he uh, dragged his father bo- his bones on a, on a mat of rope. And he uh, made everybody do Teshuvah. He got rid of uh, idolatry. He got brought back the temple service. He, he made everybody Choseh B'Teshuvah, study Torah. Such a high level Torah study Cheskiyahu made, he actually forced everybody to learn. He said, I put a sword at the entrance of the study hall and said, whoever does not engage in Torah study, you'll be pierced by this sword. Meaning, like, uh, like let's say today, they make it a uh, very, they make it compulsory to be in the IDF, let's say. So he made it compulsory, everybody has to learn. You have to learn in yeshiva, there's no such thing, you just, you know, bum out. And then the Gemara says that, um, they checked from Dan, from Dan, Shevet Dan to, uh, from city of Dan to Be'er Sheva, they didn't find any Amaris. From Gebes to Amtiparas, they didn't find a boy or a girl, a man or a woman, who was not fluent in the difficult laws of purity and impurity. So everybody knew the most difficult Mishnayot in the entire uh, Shas. Even ladies, even little kids, even little girls knew, knew the entire Torah. So for what? He has such a great Zechut. Yeah, the Syrian king Sancherev was coming, conquering one land after the other, Middle East, and eventually he conquered the land, and he conquered most of the ten tribes. Now he wants to conquer Jerusalem. And what do we see? We see that it uh, looks like the story is about to be over for King Chizkiyahu. And yet Hashem made a big miracle for him. That what? That it says in the Pasuk, that night an angel of Hashem went out and struck down 185,000 of the Assyrians. And people woke up in the morning and they saw all these dead corpses. They, it's a miracle. They don't understand uh, how, how this happened. How, how could it be? And now it's the power of King Chizkiyahu and his holiness. And look at this. This is the punchline. And the sages tell us in Sechet Sanhedrin, Daf Tzadi Dalit, that Hashem wanted to make Chizkiyahu the Mashiach. He wanted to make Sanhedrin Gog and Magog. And he wanted to bring the Geula. And if Hashem had such a thought, must be Chizkiyahu was such a great person. So why didn't he bring it? Why King Chizkiyahu wasn't Mashiach? So says the Gemara, because Midat Adin got up and he said something. What did he say? He says, Rebbe Shalom, if you didn't make King David, the Mashiach, even though he's saying songs of praise to you, Hashem, you're going to make Chizkiyahu, the Mashiach, he didn't sing songs of praise to Hashem, he didn't say Spasiba, uh, he didn't say thank you like King David did, how are you going to make him Mashiach? And because of this small infraction, this small Midat Adin, the Mashiach was delayed so much longer, it could have been that brought 2,500 years ago Mashiach. But what? It was delayed all because... He didn't praise Hashem, say thank you, like David HaMelech. So therefore, we see from this, the bigger the tzaddik you are, the more meticulous Hashem is with you. Is, is with you right? The tzaddikim Hashem is uh, meticulous to them, kechut se'ara, like the Herod's breath, right? It says, uh, right, that the nisara nisara me'od, like the one who's svivotea, nisara me'od, those who surround Hashem are very, very uh, judged on a higher level. Why? Because Hashem can expect and Hashem knows that you could do better. So therefore he expects of us and therefore he's judgmental a little bit more when it's tzaddik. A person cannot put his foot off the gas pedal and say, okay, well, I learned Torah better than a lot of other people, right? Oh, well, I, uh, I, I, I keep Shabbat better than a lot of other people. I, I keep kasher better than a lot of people. But a person has to no, no. You cannot uh, compare yourself to the ones below. You have to always compare it to the people above you spiritually. But it's funny, it's the opposite. For Gashmiud, we compare ourselves to the people above us. Oh, look what he has. Wow, I have to be like him. Oh, wow, I, I'm not like, I'm not an oligarch yet. I have to, only when I'm like him, then I'll be happy. But uh, the spirituality, people look at the be- people believe beneath them. Rabbi, at least I'm not like this. At least I'm not like that. At least, at least, at least, at least. 
And then what? Uh, they always say to themselves, I have time, what's the big deal? No rush, no pressure, no, where's the fire? And look, at least I'm not like that. So a person has to know you have to be the opposite. You have to go and push yourself and see the people above you spiritually and try to be like him. Wow, he learns in the evening also. I only learn in the morning. Wow. Psh. He prays Minha with Minyan. I don't pray Minha with Minyan. Psh. I, have to, I have to learn. I have to, uh, to copy him. But what? But when it comes to Gashmiut, you have to always look at the people beneath you and say, he doesn't have, I have. I should be happy with what I have. And therefore it says, uh, the Gemara, because David the Melech was so grateful, that was the Midah of Mashiach. But he could have been more grateful. He could have sang songs of praise to Hashem. You know, you, you hear good news. You should go and start singing. Thank you, Hashem. What? Thank you, Hashem. <laughs> but what? We don't. We don't. We, we're not grateful for what we have. And that's what's delaying Mashiach. Baruch Amen. 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 So I have to get the new book. But let's see. I didn't have to get the new, I didn't bring the new book. Hold on. Let me show what we have for today. Okay, yeah, we have Tanya. We'll do some Tanya today. The, the, the last question that you brought in.